Good evening, church family. Welcome to Theology Tuesday. We are exciting Greater St. Stephen First Church, and we are located at 3728 East Berry Street on the corner of Sydney at East Berry in the heart of Southeast Fort Worth, Texas. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 51240, Fort Worth, Texas 76105. We have been in our study based on a book by Vashti Murphy McKenzie uh, titled The Big Deal of Taking Small Steps to Move Closer to God. And we've been discussing things in this book for quite some time now. Uh, this evening, we want to spend a few minutes uh, to encourage you to grow. That's what we're talking about tonight. Simply grow. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for every good and every perfect gift. God, we pray that you would be in our study together. Help us to make the most of our time together. God, as we learn to grow in you, it's in your name we pray and we ask it all. Amen. Um, if you'll turn with me to John, the 15th chapter, we're going to look at verse 5. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. In John 15, Jesus shares this with his disciples. Uh, Jesus uses the picture of the vine because there are great vines everywhere at that time in ancient Israel. And Jesus wants us to know that he is the true vine and that we must be rooted in him. Even when he's talking to the disciples, he wanted them to understand that they had to be rooted in him, not just in Israel, because that was such a big part of who they were. Their identity was found in them in Israel. But he says, you got to be rooted in me. He wanted them to be rooted in them and he wants us to be rooted in him because if we are, we will bear fruit for God. This picture of the vine and the branch emphasizes complete dependence and the need for constant connection. As Jesus was about to depart for, from his disciples, this was important encouragement. He would remain united to them and they to him as truly as branches are connected to the main vine. As followers of Jesus Christ, we have an opportunity to live daily at the growing edge of our faith. This growing edge is the process of having a relationship with Jesus Christ and receiving revelation from God's word that brings about a change in our thinking. It brings about a change in our speaking and it brings about a change in our behavior. This is the place where we prioritize our lives around Christ who always brings new things, new ideas, new concepts to our spiritual awareness. So let me encourage you to embrace your growing edge. And we do this by participating in shared opportunities for discipleship. That's what we've been talking about all along in this book by Vashti Murphy McKenzie are our spiritual disciplines, the things that we do that will bring us closer to God. Remember, this is not a fix. It's becoming our lifestyle. It's the things that we are routinely doing. We're already praying. So she says, why don't you spend a few extra minutes in praying? We're already sharing. She says, take that a step further. Share with somebody else. Invite them. Send out the Wednesday night Bible study. She's just encouraging us to take incremental steps to do things that will bring us closer to God in this journey. So let me encourage you to grow, to embrace your growing edge. And we do this by participating. We talked about participating, sharing. We're just simply encouraging you to do small things, to take small steps to move closer to God. All throughout May, the theme was strong along, unstoppable together. The Ecclesiastes writer talked about all the instances in which two 
were unstoppable, that together they could conquer or overcome or help and support one another. The writer ends by saying that three are even better than two. As indicated by this three-strand cord, we can lean on one another for strength while we're in this process of growing in our relationship. At the growing edge of discipleship, we're able to experience the extraordinary gift of God's presence so that we may make God the center and the focus of our lives. There is an increased hunger and thirst after God's righteousness. So how do we begin? This challenge to grow starts by discovering where you are in your spiritual growth, in your spiritual development. Just discover, take a personal inventory. It's nothing that you need to type in the chat box or in the comment box. It's nothing that you need to call me and share. You're taking a personal inventory of where you are. So what do you need to do? Know where you are. Simply know where you are. When you know where you are, then you begin to realize what is needed in your life to grow closer to God. Growing to the next level of where God wants us to be is rarely easy. If you think about it, growing may be difficult, but it's in those spaces where we grow that we find the opportunities that God has for us. So we want to grow to the next level of where God wants us to be. And it's not going to be easy. It often involves some changes and challenges. And guess what? We don't like either of those. We don't like changes because then things are out of our control. We don't like challenges because things become a little bit difficult. But guess what? It often involves both of those challenges and changes. Will it be painful? Possibly. But the growing edge is where we find meaningful change occurs in our lives. This is where God shapes and molds us to accommodate the space God has designed for us to fill. Isaiah 64 and 8 says, And yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all formed by your hand. Have you ever thought about the stress that clay must be under as the potter begins to shape and mold it just the right way? Have you ever thought about the tension that the clay itself may feel as the potter begins to shape and mold and press it in a specific way? Yes. There will be some tension that we must live in as we grapple with the changes and challenges, but God promises that we are not alone. This growing edge is the place where our faith expands to meet God. So you have to know where you are. And then I'm going to encourage you to wear your own armor. Remember the story of David and Goliath in 1 Samuel 17? Saul was trying to give David his armor. Remember, David has decided he's going to be the one to go out and confront Goliath. And here is Saul. Saul means well. He says, here, take my armor. But David says, thanks, but no thanks. I already have what I need. You see, David had to fight with the weapons he was gifted to use. He needed his own weapons and he needed his own armor to fight. David's armor was his faith in the Lord. We must use the gifts that God has given us to do what God has called us to do. No, you may not do whatever like somebody else. You know, we have that saying, oh, I wish I could do it like so-and-so. Oh, I wish I could sing like Angelisa. Oh, I wish I could do this like that person. But God has gifted and equipped you to do whatever it is that God has shaped and molded you to do. So you have to wear your own armor. God calls us just as we are. God takes us and calls us with all our foolishness, with all our flaws, and with all our fumbling. God takes that and he molds it and God shapes it to do whatever it is that God has called us to do and to do great things in God. 
Good evening, church family. I'm Elder Savannah Brooks. Thank you for joining me this evening on Theology Tuesday. Are you up for the challenge to grow? God, your creator, already sees what's inside of you. Allow God to position you along a growing edge. Be blessed, and I'll see you next week.